the parting of the Red Sea, based on the movie The Ten Commandments, starring the man on your monitors, Charlton Heston. Now, Charlton Heston, he made an appearance to part the water for our guests, and the glamour tram seemed to drive right through the lake to give everyone on board a sea-level view. And as we prepare to drive past the Jaws attraction we all enjoyed a few moments ago, here's the director of the movie to tell you how that attraction even came to exist as part of the studio tour. The Jaws ride was almost the inevitable result of the size of the box office for Jaws first opening. Exactly as it was from the time it was first placed on the Universal Lot. There have been tweaks, of course, over the years, but it is essentially what the designers and myself all envisioned and created. Thank you. There's the DeLorean from Back to the Future. have a great photo opportunity coming up over here on the left. You may recall Lion Estates is where Marty McFly lived in our Back to the Future trilogy. we got the Lion Estates and the Time Machine. Now one of the executive producers of Back to the Future was the man you just heard from, Steven Spielberg. And we're currently driving on Steven Spielberg Drive, which is pretty appropriate since our history with him goes back long before the movie Jaws. Long before he executive produced Back to the Future, you can say it goes all the way back to him as a teenager taking the Universal Studios tour. My entire career began with my relationship with Universal Studios just as a high school kid on a tour bus. Remember in those days there weren't trams, there were buses called the Grey Line Tour Bus. And I was so excited and thrilled to be on the lot. It was my first time ever on a movie studio lot. And during a bathroom break, I hid in the bathroom. Ooh. Everybody left to get back on the bus. I waited another 15 minutes until I'm sure the bus left. And then I had the entire lot to myself that day. And in those days, movie lots were so crowded because all movies were made on film lots. Today they're made all over the world, on locations, but most of it was focused in those days in the 60s on the film lots. And so nobody noticed me when I was going around from soundstage to soundstage. And I really felt in my own young way, I owned the lot and had the most amazing day of my life. Now, Steven Spielberg's history with us, his working history with us, I shall say, it goes back to 1969 when he directed an episode of Rod Serling's Night Gallery. The segment was called Eyes and it starred the incomparable Joan Crawford. Now, one of his non-directing assignments at that time was to give a tour to a young author who had just sold the rights to his novel to Universal Studios to turn it into a movie. The novel was The Andromeda Strain, and the author was Michael Crichton. Twenty years later, those two would team up to bring all of us in the audience Jurassic Park, right? Now, in just a few moments, we're going to show you guys one of the biggest sets that have ever been put together for a Steven Spielberg film. This is the set from the movie War of the Worlds that movie starred Tom Cruise. Have a listen as we enter the set. The airplane crash site set is perfect example of a set that is all designed around for the end, he said, now they're talking about the war of the world. I thought, what if the 747 goes down the right in the neighborhood? Because it was just something you don't see. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's a real airplane. Here's how the set looked on the big screen for the movie. Get in. Get in. 
And are you ready for this? All of this was put together so it could appear on the big screen for only three minutes of the entire film. Welcome to Hollywood! <laughs> We're directly in front of us. We have a pretty iconic set. Now this set coming up on the right has been a part of the studio tour since the beginning, since 1964. That's Norman Bates' house from the movie Psycho on your monitors. That's how it looked in the film. This is one of the most famous sets still standing in all of Hollywood. Now for the first few decades of the studio tour, there was no Park because it hadn't been built yet. You would buy your ticket on Lancashire Boulevard, come inside, take a two-hour tour, and then go home. So one of the hallmarks of the tour during that time was a visit to Prop Plaza where guests could disembark from the tram to take photos and interact with characters, vehicles, and props from their favorite productions. Well, guess what? As an homage to those earlier days of the tour and in celebration of our 60th birthday, we've decided to bring back that element on today's tour. Our driver is going to pull forward to allow you to get off the tram and take pictures in front of our Hollywood replica sign the Psycho House, the Bates Motel with Norman Bates peeking at you through the window, the original Glamour Tram, the Hanging Shark from Jaws, cars from the Fast and Furious, and props from the past 60 years of entertainment history. Oh, and guys, make sure you scan the QR codes that you find in front of the Jaws attraction and in front of the King Kong attraction. Scan the QR code for an interactive element that's pretty cool. Now when you continue the tour, you're going to be on a different tram with a different tour guide and driver. <laughs> so make sure you take all of your personal belongings. Take all of your personal belongings. Bye bye. Have fun. You're welcome. You're welcome. I gotta take your turn next. <laughs>